Welcome to video 22 on fun with Arduino. It can really liven up your layout when you have a police car or an ambulance or a firefighter car with blinking lights. It's always fun to watch. And well, the question is how can we do that? Well, the result we are going to strive for is this firefighter car with three blinking LEDs. And the whole uh, idea is that we are going to have one piece of software where the blinking sequence is configurable. Let's have a look how we can do this. Okay, so to create a step sequencer, uh, what we would like is to have uh, to define a series of zeros and ones that represent the pattern of blinking that we would like to have. And then, yeah, to step through these zeros and one with, with a interval time that we can also specify, of course. So the, the whole question is, how can we store this sequence of zeros and ones in a variable? Well, there luckily is a construction for that, which is called an array. And what is an array? That is a variable that simply has a name. Uh, but we can store multiple values in them and we can point to uh, these different values with an index, an, uh, an index pointer, so to speak. So to declare an array, simply give it a name. Well, we have to give it a, a variable type, of course, but then the name. In this case, I chose the name sequencer, but uh, you can choose any name, like with any variable. And then between uh, square brackets we say how many storage locations we want well in this case i'm going to make a step sequencer with 16 steps mind that the pointer does not run from 1 to 16 <coughs> the pointer always starts at 0 so it runs from 0 to 15. now uh, if i would like to point to one of the values in the array i could do this uh, I could write down sequencer number 5 is a, is a 1. And then if I would write digital write 13, which is the onboard LED uh, sequencer 5, which I just gave the value 1, then obviously my onboard LED will switch on. Okay, so far so good. This is how an array works. Now, how can we load the array with our initial values? Well, that also is quite simple. You can already, with the declaration itself, also give it its initial values. That is between these curled brackets, and then we create our sequence of zeros and ones, and then we end with a semicolon. So this <coughs> defines 16 values of the array called sequencer. And now, if I would use this in the software, yeah, then my LED will blink in this pattern. Uh, and if I want to create another pattern, well, then simply in one, in this simple one line of code, I can create another pattern and run that. Of course, we can also create uh, multiple patterns for multiple LEDs, which is exactly what we are going to do. But let's do it first for one LED. Right, so here is the code for one LED. To make it a bit more flexible, we define the number of steps to be 16, but we can change that to 8 or 32 or whatever number we like. We also define a speed, which is a number of milliseconds between the steps. And obviously a lower number means faster blinking. You can play with that number to get the effect that you like. And then, because this is for one LED, we define the onboard LED to be the one that we are going to use. Then here is our step sequencer. Uh, yeah, that is, this is the sequence that I want to uh, blink in. And uh, that is uh, defined right now. Then I have the pointer and I simply call it P. And we have, of course, our unsigned long, and that is the time to step. In setup, we do only one thing. We create our LED pin, uh, we define our LED pin to be an output. 
than in the loop? Well, there is uh, uh, just a simple timer uh, statement that is uh, if it, uh, the current clock is larger than time to step, then, yeah, we have done this many times before, time to step becomes the current clock plus our blink speed, and we now do a digital write to the LED pin. Uh, what are we going to write there? Well, our variable, array variable sequencer with the pointer P. The pointer P started at 0, and now that we have used the number 0, we are simply going to increment our pointer by 1. But, of course, when we reached the maximum number of steps, then we want it to return to 0 again, and that is done with this percentage uh, and then number of steps. A percentage is the modulo operator, which means if uh, P reached the number of steps, it resets now to 0, which is exactly what we want, and then the whole pattern repeats itself. So the code is actually yeah, quite uh, short, it's only a couple of lines, four lines to be exact. Uh, and the whole secret of how the blinking takes place, that is configurable. If we change these uh, numbers here, then we can change how our LED blinks. Well, enough talking, let's have a look how this looks. Okay, let's upload this code and start a video. Yeah, uploading done and blink, blink, blink. And yeah, well, that is the sequence that we had. Uh, that is blinking okay. And that looks good. So uh, let's go on to the next step at a timer. Okay, that blinks uh, nice. Let's first add a timer to it, because I can imagine that uh, when you are playing with your model railway layout, you don't want that blinking light all of the time. So we're going to make a push button uh, or a DCC trigger, and then have the LED blink for a limited amount of time. And therefore we added uh, this trigger pin number and we added this blink time in seconds which I now put at 6 but that can of course be any number. Also I changed uh, the number of steps to 48 and made a uh, much longer blink cycle which, uh, with a little bit more interesting pattern that we can also use on our fire truck later. Then, of course, we have a state transition diagram, which we have been using quite a few times before. And that means that we have a, a switch state with uh, the two cases in, the idle case. And there we are waiting for our trigger pin. And then we are blinking and we are simply waiting until it is time to stop blinking. And of course we also have two transitions and uh, if it is uh, switch, switched on, the blinking is switched on then we do blink enabled is one. And we of course set our timer to uh, switch it off later. And then when we are uh, at the time to stop blinking then simply we stop blinking. Uh, and that's all there is to it. Let's uh, have a go. This is the exact same code that we had just before. So let's upload this and see what happens. Um, yeah, uploading done. Let me open a serial monitor and then I can now push the trigger button. And yeah, we see the blinking started and we also see the messages on the screen. And it has stopped now. So yeah, that all is working fine. Now we can have a, a police car or fire truck not blinking all the time and making us go crazy. Right, that works fine. Now for the final step, we want to add multiple LEDs. <coughs> In this example, we're going to use three. Which means that also to the code I now added the number of LEDs 
is 3. We still have our number of steps at 48. Uh, we have a blink time like we had before and oh, this pin is pin 8. Uh, <coughs> and now there's something uh, added. We have multiple LEDs and so I defined another array called LED pin uh, with the number of LEDs which in our case was 3. And then here I specified the LED pins. And that is uh, uh, used in the setup. Well, let's let's have a look at setup. Why not? Uh, in setup, we now use a so-called for loop, and a for loop means that we have a counter. In this call, in this case, our counter is uh, n, and n runs from zero to the number of LEDs with an increment, a step 1 increment. And then for every n it does this between the brackets, it sets our pin mode to output and it also writes a low to it, so all our LEDs are off. So this is what's called a for loop. You have a counter and that loop is done as many times as the counter says it should be done. And inside the loop you can use your counter, in this case, as a pointer to our array. Which of course is for quite convenient. Right, so we have uh, used that array to define our LED pins as outputs. And then there's also another thing, we now have our sequencer not only using the number of steps but also using the number of LEDs. Uh, so it has now become a so-called uh, multi-dimensional array. We have two dimensions, two pointers that we can use. <coughs> How are we going to load the uh, initial step values in those arrays? Well, that's quite simple. You just uh, have your number of steps and then you repeat it, in this case three times, because we have three LEDs, which means the, it first starts to read uh, for uh, zero over here, and that means it reads this first line, uh, and it reads then the number of steps. Then it jumps to uh, numlets is 1 and then it reads this second line, again number of steps and then numlets becomes 3 and uh, it reads the final steps. So this array is loaded fully automatically uh, yeah, under the condition that you don't forget any value. That is why I wrote this uh, line over here, this command line and I can now clearly see that I went up to from 0 up to 47 so I don't forget anything that's only there for, yeah, for, for ease of use. So this is how we load our array with the step value for three different LEDs. Uh, nothing has changed uh, in the, uh, the switch state and the switch transition because we are still using uh, a timer to let the blinking happen only a limited amount of time. But we had to change a little bit of course now in our blink part. Uh, if blink is enabled then we look at our timer. And if it is time then again we have a for loop over here because we do not need to blink only one LED, we need to blink three LEDs. or uh, numlets, but numlets was 3. So again we have here a for loop for n is 0 to numlets increment 1. What do we do? Well we write our let pin n and then what value do we write? Sequencer n comma p so to speak. Yeah, it may seem a little bit uh, uh, complicated, but the whole fun is you can simply download the software and use it. And all that you need to change if you want another sequence is these values over here and you have another sequence. 
it's quite easy to change what your LED needs to do. You don't have to change the code, only change this sequence. Well, enough talking again, let's have a look. And um, this is the fire truck that we are now going to look at. It has uh, three LEDs. Um, the next video we are going to have another look at a sequencer, but now not for LEDs that are connected individually, but we are going to use the so-called NeoPixel LEDs. Those are really great fun to use on a model railway layout. See you back there. Bye bye.